Welcome. In this module, while we're looking at different security frameworks and standards, we'll look at an exceptional technical security framework, which is SANS. Formerly it was SANS, but now it's the CIS Critical Security Controls. And this was also referred to as CIS Top 20 Critical Security Controls. And it's a very useful, exceptional collection of controls for improving the security posture. And it's a very good recommendation also to use for security engineering. So as you can see, we're moving gradually from generic to more specific. 27001 was very generic, high level, but an exceptional standard. 27002 gives more guidance, is more specific. PCI DSS, which is only for the financial industry and cardholder data environment, was very specific and is very in-depth. It uh, tells us exactly what to do, how many days, how to do it, how should we test it, gives us the guidance. And then um, even more specific, in-depth, and exceptional set of security controls for any environment is the CIS Critical Security Controls. Now, available on the website of CIS, you have the controls, and let's just do a walkthrough. What are these controls? Number one, inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices. Number two, inventory of authorized and unauthorized software. Number three, secure configurations for hardware and software. And now you can see that under inventory, we had inventory management or inventory of assets under ISO 27001 as well. And for secure configurations, we do that control implementation in our security hardening. And number four is continuous vulnerability assessment and remediation, which is layer number two in our information security transformation model. Controlled use of administrative privileges. We saw a lot of that in uh, ISO 27001. Maintenance, monitoring, and analysis of audit logs. We also saw this in 27001. Email and web browser protections. We saw in 27001 that uh, we need to do malware protection. And then you have malware defenses, for example, at the uh, edge. And number nine is limitation and control of network ports, which would come under security hardening of our information security transformation model. Then you have data recovery capability. And then in 11, you have secure configurations for network devices. Number 12 is boundary defense. Number 13, data protection. Number 14, controlled access based on the need to know. Number 15 is wireless access control. Number 16, account monitoring and control. 17, security skills assessment and appropriate training to fill gaps. We saw that in 27001. Application software security. So you can see that some of the control sets mentioned here, like wireless, was not mentioned in 27001 because it's very generic. And also, we have software security here, and we, we saw that software security was addressed as uh, system acquisition, development, and maintenance in 27001. And you have incident response and management, which was uh, the incident management control set in 27001. It was quite detailed over there. And then you have penetration tests uh, being talked about here, which had no mention at all in 27001. So overall, an exceptional control set for technical controls. Let's take a walkthrough of some of the controls. Now, control 1.1, inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices. And while I I explain these controls to you, you can notice the level of depth and how specific they are, and, and they are such excellent recommendations as well. Deploy an automated asset inventory discovery tool, so it's telling you exactly what to do, and use it to build a preliminary inventory of systems connected to an organization's public and private networks, both active tools that scan through IPv4 or IPv6, network address ranges, and passive tools that identify hosts based on analyzing the traffic should be employed. The next control set is inventory of authorized and unauthorized software. Devise a list of authorized software and version that is required in the enterprise for each type of system. And it's really telling you about software and version for each type of system, including servers, workstations, and laptops of various kinds and uses. So you're actually doing a kind of software uh, whitelisting this list should be monitored by file integrity checking tools. Very specific and useful information to validate that the authorized software has not been modified. Control 3.1, secure configs for hardware and software. Establish standard secure configurations of your operating systems and software applications. 
Standardized images should represent hardened versions of the underlying operating system and the applications installed on the system. These images should be validated and refreshed on a regular basis to update their security configuration in light of recent vulnerabilities and attack vectors. Excellent, excellent guidance here. 4.1, continuous vulnerability assessment and remediation. Now take a look at the depth and the style of recommending these security controls. Run automated vulnerability scanning tools against all systems on the network on a weekly or more frequent basis. Amazing, it's telling you to do this on a weekly basis, which is quite intense. And deliver prioritized lists of the most critical vulnerabilities to each responsible system administrator, along with risk scores that compare the effectiveness of system administrators and departments in reducing risk. So it's telling you very specifically what actions to take. And it continues uh, with Control 4.1 about using a SCAP validated vulnerability scanner that looks for code-based vulnerabilities, such as those described by common vulnerabilities and exposures entries and configuration-based vulnerabilities as enumerated by the configuration enumeration project, common configuration enumeration project. Control 5.1, controlled use of administrative privileges. Again, just to give you a sample of the level of depth and the layout and the style of these security controls. Minimize administrative privileges and only use administrative accounts when they are required. Implement focused auditing on the use of administrative privilege functions and monitor for anomalous behavior. So what we actually see is 27001, for example, a great control set and a framework and standard tells us what to do at a high level, a great checklist, a great framework, good for organizing your overall information security program, but it lacks detail. It's generic. It's very high level. It doesn't tell you, what, you know, how you should do it. So 27002 uh, gives you the guidelines and tells you how you should do what 27001 has advised in terms of controls, and it gives you guidance, the context, and explains uh, different mechanisms how to implement the security controls. And the CIS uh, critical controls, or CISCC as I referred here, give you exceptional and in-depth technical guidance in order to implement the technical controls. So an ideal framework, uh, the CIS critical or the CIS top 20 security controls are an ideal framework for more detailed and specific guidance on deeper and more stringent security controls. In fact, this is one of the most uh, deepest and the strongest and the best um, list or, or uh, collection of security controls that is available. And that's all that we have for this module. Thank you.